today's video, we will be covering some of the best survival add-ons for MCPE that make the Trails and Tales update much better with expansions for already existing bombs and some new enchantments to actually look forward to, or even features from Java Edition to MCPE. All these add-ons were inspired by the look of the trailer which we will replicate so you can have the best experience with what I believe Minecraft should truly be. So with that said, please follow me on this journey as we discover the add-ons that make Minecraft Pocket Edition good. Starting off we have the Bare Bones Texture Pack which basically changes how Minecraft looks, making it look like the trailer version we see on Mojang's animations. This is a more cartoony approach to the game with some really cool looks to the block textures and armor. It is honestly good. But now moving on to the second, player action optimization gives the player animations that are more lively and cartoonish as we saw in the Minecraft trailers, giving life to what used to be the basic actions, and it complements the Bare Bones Texture Pack. However, what would it be to only include our own actions and leave out vanilla mobs? So Remotion fixes that and gives mobs similar lively animations with small details like eye movements, changed walking animations for various mobs, for example the zombie is an actual zombie now, and the witch is well, a witch. As you've seen the new skins roll out in the Minecraft updates, Villager Variety adds new textures for the villagers so that there's diversity in race. Water Splash Texture implements the Water Splash effect from the Minecraft trailers which is honestly too good not to add. This works for any item you throw in the water which will produce a splash. Moving on, Transparent Smoke makes the smoke from campfires to actually become transparent so you are not constantly blinded and can see what's actually behind the smoke. Animated Blocks adds various animations for blocks throughout the game like Copper which is my favorite and the jukebox will actually look like it's producing music and several other tweaks for blocks like Amethyst can be found with the shiny effect. Chat Animations adds a chat animation to the game which complements this cartoony theme we've made. Now reading chat is actually fun and not stale. To add on to this, Java Hand Fix remodels the hand texture to match the Java Edition counterpart. However, we can do more than just remodel the hand. Java Combat completely changes the dynamic on how you play by adding item cooldowns for various tools, adding a feature where the axe stuns the shield like in Java and generally making more enhancements to the game. For example, the goofy shield animation in Bayrock now changes to the more refined Java edition animations. There's also a couple of fixes in the combat side. Now attacking with the sword will bring the Java sweep attack which makes fighting a group of zombies much more easier. It also adds a few changes to the visual like a critical hit causing hearts. Best Gamers Better Overhaul basically overhauls the game. Copper Nuggets being a new item can be found in structures which can be used to craft the full Copper Igni. It also does Copper some justice as you can craft a Copper Lantern and Chain. Now in a stronghold you can fight Silverfish for a new item called Silverfish Scales which can be used to craft the Chainmail Armor Set, actually giving Silverfish a new use. Another feature to take a look at is that killing a drowned mob, especially the drowned zombie, will drop a new item called Sunken Flesh and another counterpart of an undead mob which is the husk will drop smoldering flesh which can all be used to craft their specific blocks. These blocks can be fed to the wolf or even put in the furnace to give a new source of leather. On the other side of things, zombies can now be found riding horses and it reimagines the illusion of mob that was cancelled in the mob vote. That is a pretty interesting battle that you can immerse yourself in. Now killing the ravager will give you a chance to get its horn, which one can be put in the crafting table and surrounded with emeralds to give you the olivager item which can be used in a village to give you a temporary buff called hero of the village making villages actually give you cheaper prices on their items. A new mob called an os can be found on the caves below which come in 7 different variants matching their selected orb which you can kill to get the ore displayed on their body. This add-on also implements changes in other dimensions like new life in the nether and a new enemy called the Basal Giant with a considerably high melee damage being a very dangerous foe to face. A new ore called Ruby is now in the nether which many fans wanted along with several changes in the end dimension including ores you can find to craft two new sets of armor which honestly look great in my opinion. 
This next add-on is Baum's update. Now being lesser than the previous add-on, it includes features in Minecraft like bears now in the forest that interact with vanilla mobs which blend in well, and other cancelled mobs that could have been in Minecraft like the west being an early version of the LA. The Yeti is a mob that is hostile found in the snowy plains that can be defeated to get the horn that can upgrade the stone sword. Other concepts are in this add-on like gorillas found in jungles, snakes in desert bombs, and various other aesthetics to make bombs feel more alive. An ambitious addition to this add-on was the scuba gear seen in the mob vault which I absolutely love. You can also find a new source of Nautilus shoe and ore that can drop shards used to craft the full Nautilus shell. A wandering soul can also be found in soul sand valleys that drop vaccine souls, and the blaze powder can be used to upgrade the golden sword to a flaming sword. Now let's take a look at the already existing bombs like the cherry bomb. The better cherry blossom bomb adds three new wood types and a new mob called the blossom muncher which is still in progress. More enchantments adds a new block called the netherite enchantment table that gives you a whole new access to a list of enchantments. For example the sweeping edge effect from java, a beehive enchantment inflicting poison damage to mobs head also covering their faces with a beehive, the tree capitator enchantment that is efficient and will instantly fall entire trees. The soul lightning enchantment that adds dynamic lighting to any helmet with this enchantment being useful for caves and the pyro walker which will leave a path of store when you walk while slime nullifies fall damage. More crossbows add several new crossbows to the game which look amazing but that's not the true function as they have unique abilities. For example the warden crossbow shoots out sonic boom effects that the warden has but it balances it as it needs echo shots to craft bows for it. The shulker crossbow fires the shulker bullets that causes levitation, useful for pvp battles. Then the beehive crossbow fires a shot of honey towards the mob that, which aggravates a bee to sting it which looks similar to the previous beehive enchantment from the more enchantments add-on. My personal favorite is the amethyst crossbow that shoots an amethyst sonic projectile. More simple structures makes exploration in the Trails and Tales update much more rewarding and fun to engage in as these are a variety of structures and loot within them being a great addition to this list. Let's do the end some more justice by adding the post end add-on. It adds more content to this and dimension like new ores in an armor set and tools obtainable by defeating a new boss called the end guardian which is a very formidable opponent that will stop by no means to defeat you and protect the end. It is able to summon end launchers, small cannons that fall around you shooting fireballs. This is a very difficult boss even in netherite so make sure to have your friends help you defeating it. To improve the look of the main menu, 1.20 Cherry Paranorma adds a Paranorma to Minecraft's main menu which looks twice as better. Ambient sounds adds new sounds in the game that make it feel more alive by adding in game ambience for different bombs which is really a well made add-on that didn't just slam background music. In your opinion, do you feel this add-on is a necessary addition? I feel like it is. Better armor trim improves the expensive armor trim recipe to a more manageable one. Going to the last add-on, right click harvest is a really useful add-on that mimics the way the villagers harvest crops by automatically replanting them when you hold a hoe and interact with the fully grown crop, saving so much time replanting them and being efficient simultaneously. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and with that said, watch this video on the screen for more survival add-ons that make the game much more better.